Okay, gang, we are going to work on 7.7a, which is using um, inverse functions to find angles, and I'm going to show you what that means. Um, but the most important thing to remember is that we are just using SOHCAHTOA. So after you get that copied, start your video again. Um, the first thing that I want to make sure that we remember is our trig ratios. And these blanks here are for our word SOHCAHTOA. So remember we have SOH, that's for the sine. And then we have CAH, that's for the cosine. And then we have TOA, and that is for the tangent. Um, so if we are looking at this angle right here, focusing on the angle that's circled right here, labeling our sides, we have always the hypotenuse opposite the 90 degree angle. We have the side that touches the angle as the adjacent side, and we have the side that does not touch the angle as the opposite. So when we find the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, we pick our opposite side, BC, and we put it over the hypotenuse, which is AC. We take our cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we put our adjacent side, AB, over our hypotenuse side, which is AC. And then for the tangent, we take the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is um, the BC, and the adjacent is the AB. When they ask for ratios, we are just making these fractions Um, according to the triangle that's been given to us. Remember using our trig table, um, we use the angle right here and then we make sure that we go to the right column for cosine. So we are looking in the 70 degree um, yellow highlighted section there and then we're looking under the cosine column and we are finding the decimal 0 0.3420. If you want to put that zero in front, that's good. We can do the same with 68 degrees and look under the sine column. So here we go to 68 and we look under the sine column. We get 0 0.9272. And the last one we have here is 72 degrees. And we're going to go into the tangent column. 3.0772. If you look on your whole chart, the one thing that you do notice is that 90 degrees is never going to be used. We only use the acute angles from our triangle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on all of this stuff and we are going to work backwards. So go down to the next section of your worksheet here. It says use inverse, inverse trig functions um, to find angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to get your table out and I have a large version here. And in that table, we're going to look for the cosine value that is 0.3746. So in the cosine column, we are going to look for the decimal of 0.37 in the cosine column, 0.3746. And then we read backwards to find out that that angle must be 68 degrees. So now we're finding the decimal first and then reading backwards to the angle. For the next one, let me just make my chart bigger here so that you can see what we're doing. Oops, let me bring it, bring it to the front. So you're looking at your blue chart here. For this problem, we're looking for 0 0.9063 in the sine column. So in the sine column, we look down until we find 0 0.9063 and we read over to the side and we find out that that angle is 65 degrees. All right, let's try it again with um, letter C this time. Again, I'm gonna make my chart bigger so that we can see what's going on. Um, you should be looking at your chart and we are going to now look in the tangent column for 
2.3559, so we're now in the tangent column. Notice I'm looking in tangent. I read down until I get close to that, and right here it is. 2.3559, so I read over, and there I have 67 degrees. What happens now if I try with this one? So for D, now I'm going to read in my cosine column for 0 0.3400. If you look in the cosine column and you read down, you notice that we have 0 0.3420 and we have 0.3256. Neither one of those is exactly 0 0.3400. So now we need to pick the closest one between 70 and 71 degrees. That means this angle right here is approximately 70 or 71 degrees. If we use a calculator, we can get a little bit closer. When we're using the table, I would take either answer. We just choose the one that is closest to 0 0.3400. And in this case, we would take either answer. Now for the last two, I want you to take your table. I want you to try to find those angle measures. Um, Pause your video, find the angle measures, get your answers, and then we'll come back, turn it back on as soon as you think you have it. So I'm going to pause for a minute. All right, so I came back. I discovered that in the sine column, we went down, we got close to 67 degrees, and in the tan column for letter F, we came down and we got closest to 71 degrees. Those are your functions. All right, flip to page two. All right, it says we will be finding angle measures now. Instead of sides, we'll be finding angle measures. To do that, you will use the inverse functions to find angles. What does that really mean? That means we will be reading the chart backwards. We are still going to use SOCATOLA for all of these problems. Um, we just have to read the chart backwards. So, looking at letter A, we find the angle that they're talking about, and X is right up here. Like we did before, we label our sides. Opposite of the, high, um, the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. This side that touches the X is the adjacent. So I look up above and adjacent and hypotenuse is my cosine. So we write the cosine of X equals 10 over 15. Now what you do is you take that 10 over 15 and you divide that and you come up with a decimal value, which is 0.6667. And then we are going to look in the cosine column for that value to come up with the answer. I made the chart. And if I look at my cosine column for that value, cosine column, 0.6667, closest right there, I think. X is about 48 degrees. And that's all you have to do. Now, technically, how does this cosine thing go away? We do what's called the inverse. So to move that to the other side, we take the inverse of both sides. And so we write x equals cosine negative 1, 0.6667. And that little inverse symbol right there means read the chart backwards. Let's do it again for the next problem. Notice we have the same numbers, um, but we move them around a little bit. From the x, we now have the opposite side, and we still have the hypotenuse. 
So if I look up above, opposite and hypotenuse is not the least sine. So we write sine of x equals 10 over 15. We divide that out again and we get 0.6667. Now again, we want to move this to the other side. We do that by the inverse, 0.6667, which simply means to look at my chart. Um, in the sine column, so in my sine column, I look for 0.6667. I think that's closest to 0.6691, and I read that over. And X is about 42 degrees. For problem C, um, we look at this problem and we notice now we have many unknown things. We always want you to do the easiest thing possible. And I do notice that I have one angle up here of 35 degrees and I have the 90 right here and I'm missing the angle Z down here. And the one thing we know that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So if I take off the 90, and then I take off the 35, it turns out that Z is equal to 55 degrees. We didn't use any of our sine, cosine, or tangent. We just know that Z is 55 degrees. From there, we're going to use um, some of our Sokotoa. So from 35 degrees, we notice that we have to use the adjacent side because that's one that we know, but we could also use the hypotenuse. And for now, we are not going to do the y, we're just going to do x. So we would set up the equation with um, adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. So we have cosine of 35 equal to six over x. When we have it set up like this, we're not going to go backwards on our chart, we're gonna go forwards. We look at our chart. Um, this cosine of 35 is right here, 0.8192. So this is from um, last week. Remember, we cross that out, 0.8192. And we cross multiply, x times 0.8192 is equal to one times six. This is a divide problem. And I go to my calculator, six divide 0.8192, and I get x to be 7.32. That is the length of this side right here. Now we're gonna go and find out what y is. And you can do one of two things. You can, um, excuse me, you can use opposite and hypotenuse, which would be sine. Um, 7.32, where is that? 7.32. Or you could simply use Pythagorean theorem. Six squared plus y squared equals 7.32 squared. You could do whichever one you want, both would solve to get you the right answer. Just quickly to talk about D and finish this one up, notice that we don't have either of the angles, so you might want to find out what x is first. And if you have all of the sides, remember you can use a little Pythagorean theorem. 10 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. And you can solve that out. 100 plus x squared equals 169 minus 100. x squared equals 69. And then we would take the square root of that. and get x to be 8.31. And then to find out the angle measures, 
doesn't matter which one we pick, if we just pick Z because it's on the top, I would look at the 10 and the 13. 13 would be your hypotenuse, 10 would be your adjacent, and that would be cosine. So we write cosine of Z equals 10 over 13. Go to your chart. We'll first divide that out, and we get 0 0.7692, and then we move that over, and that's where we do cosine to the negative 1 of 0 0.7692. And if you look at your chart, we would end up with 39 or 40 degrees. And then if I know that that's 40 degrees, I know that this one right here has to be 50 degrees because we have 90 degrees all together. Good luck on your, um, on filling out your notes and we will talk about tomorrow. We will talk tomorrow to get um, everything explained.